Hey, welcome back. We're here again. Um, this video was pretty challenging for me. Um, there was there was a part of me was like, I don't think I'm gonna get this one done. Um, the the challenge was the retracks. Um, this is a big plane. Uh, the the retracks require a a lot of a lot of power. Um, you know, I was thinking, you know, when I was putting this plane together, I was thinking, well, you know. I can control the the voltage on the on the BEC, so I, in my mind I was like, well, let's, let's put six volts. The you know the servos are rated as six volts, and so I can make certain there's enough, you know, um, power going through. There there shouldn't be a problem. Um, that wasn't the best idea. Um, I, I learned um, that wasn't very smart. Um, you know, when you for the servos when you when you give them more voltage, you know, they they get um, they move faster, they get more torque. Um, I ended up burning out a servo. Um, the 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 nose um, the servo used for the nose steering, I ended up burning that out. But uh, well, the challenge was that the the retracts. Whenever you, you know, when you you get three retracts, so when you flip them on, it has like a burst of power that it needs, and the speedy B isn't giving it. Um, it's not allowing that much power to go through. Um, you know, I tried all kinds of things. I ended up uh, trying to use um, another uh, UBEC, uh, UBEC, you know, the, with a, another power source, trying to, um, to to supply just power for the retracts. Um, I, I could never even get that to work right. I ended up burning 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 one of those out. Um, I ended up the solution that I came up with was to um, Put the you know the split the retracts to two different um, switches so so it's not ideal um, you know maybe maybe another flight controller maybe uh, one of the uh, high, um, uh, higher end Maytech flight controllers can can you know give you more you know power uh, you know at that initial you know whenever you flip the switch for the flight you know for the the retracts um, but basically you know it's a, a flip flip one switch send two retracts you know down and then flip the other one for that third retract it works um, you know the the problem is you know when you if you do this it you're gonna have to remember to you know to do it each time whenever you're whenever you take off and also when you land you can remember that you know your retracts are two switches um, you know luckily with the ix14 um, I can, you know, type in the, um, you know, the, the prompt in there, so I can tell it to say, you know, when I flip the switch, say, hey, you know, don't forget the the second switch retract, you know, you know, vice versa, whenever I'm, you know, landing. Um, so, that being said, I, I did go back to the BEC uh, voltage jumper and remove the six volt, put it back at five volt. Um, that's plenty. Um, you don't you don't need to you know for this for this for this bill for this plane five volt is is all you need um, so yeah uh, so with with this with this video it's it's not going to be short I want I wanted to be very thorough and very detailed on um, everything that we're that we're uh, going through on this we're going to finish setting up the model um, on the transmitter. I want you to do here. We we put the um, the flight controller in the plane. I show you how to hook it up. Um, I go through how to set up the the channel servos um, in iNav on how to and how to get them working. Um, and you know I also go through um, calibrating the ESC and um, give you a demonstration on, on how all that works. Um, basically, at the end of this video. Uh, we've got a few tweaks we still got to do, but we are at the point where this plane can be taken out and do line of sight flying. Um, and you know, outside of that, the next step, uh, except for a few uh, minor tweaks um, that we need to do, we're ready to start uh, putting the FPV gear in um, pretty soon. So let's get going. All right, before I take out the Spectrum AR 637T receiver um, the in the first video I showed you the the rat's nest of, of wires that um, 
you know, how it comes from the, from the factory. Since then, I've ordered some multiplex connectors. Um, I actually got them from a, from a guy on the RC Group forums. He, you know, he, he makes these for, for individuals who order them, but you can also get these for, you know, from, from other companies. But um, these are quick connect this, uh, connectors, um, so that way you can just, you know, connect them and disconnect them, you know, easily for each wing. This way it's not going to be a big mess. But I just wanted to show you, you know, that these these type of connectors are available. You know, it's kind of a it's kind of long. You know, I'll, I'll do something hopefully to, to have some better wire management. Um, you know, but there's a lot of room in the inside the plane here to do something with them. But I, I just kind of want to show you what I what I have here. I've already um, connected them. You know, to the to the to the spectrum receiver here um, and tested them. To, to make certain they're working before, uh, you know, before I, before I take the this receiver out. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is to take this uh, spectrum receiver out. Since we're since we're not going to be using it, I'll take it out and um, go ahead and put the start setting it up to put the bus, the speedy flight controller in here and uh, get everything connected and we'll start programming this plane for. Uh, for the flight controller. Okay, we've got the EDB uh, flight controller in the fuselage now. And I know right now it's a, it's a big mess. We've got the quick connect um, cables in here and they're they're long, but uh, they're gonna make it easy whenever we carry the plane out to the field and we're able to just, you know, snap the cables in and not have to worry about fishing the, the cables in and keep connecting them. To, to the to flight control each time. Um, what I did is I removed the the receiver that the spectrum receiver that came with the plane. You know it was it was right here. It was a spectrum AR six thirty seven TA. I pulled it out and what I did is I put a piece of uh, plywood that I got from you know a, a spare uh, a piece of scrap that I had from Hobby Lobby um, that I cut out and put right here and. Uh, uh, mounted here with uh, double stick foam tape. Um, you can see it's it's not it's not going anywhere. Um, went ahead and mounted my GPS uh, right here. Um, it's also mounted with double stick tape. It's not going anywhere. Remember, you want this this little piece of tin right here. You want it to be facing up towards the sky. Um, and this right here is the USB Type C connector. This is how we'll connect it back to the laptop so that we can get back in the INAP configurator to get to it. Um, here in just a second, we're going to connect all these cables. Now, I was doing some testing before, uh, you know, before I was making this video, and was struggling with getting the retracts working right. So we're going to go through that, but. We're going to show you how this stuff's going to connect before I connect these wires. Um, but in these these header pins here, um, this this right here, just to be clear, you know, because once you start connecting this stuff, it's going to be hard to see. But this this pin right here is for the S bus. If you're connecting an S bus receiver, and we are not, we're going to be connecting the the uh, Spectrum SRXL2 receiver, which is going to be connecting to these pins, these four pins right up here. Um, so where we're going to start is we're going to start um, with the throttle and we're going to connect it right here um, and then we're going to so that'll be the S1 and we're going then we're going to skip the S2 which is the, another motor here so we're not going to put anything right here so what we're going to do next is we're going to start on the S3 which is going to be the for the pitch it'll be the elevator so that'll be here and then the next one is going to be the aileron. And since the uh, since Spectrum put the ailerons on a Y connector, we're going to leave it on a Y connector. I had originally uh, set it up um, so that way we could put each aileron on its own um, on its own uh, pins. But um, because what I because I had to play games with the the retracts because they require so much um, initial voltage going out 
and I'll, I'll explain that. Um, I'm going to leave them on, on the on the retrack. So we're going to do um, nothing here. That's S bus. This one's going to be where you hook your 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 throttle for your motor. This will be empty because that's for another uh, motor, which will be empty. So this pin right here is going to be um, for your elevator aileron. We're going to leave this one empty, and then this one is going to be for your um, your rudder. This one is going to be retract, and we're going to have a second one for a retract because we're going to have to play games. But this one's going to be for your first retract. This is going to be for your flaps. This is going to be for your uh, your pan. And we're not going to hook it up in this video, but this one will be for your pan. This one will be for your tilt. And we're not going to hook it up in this video. And this last one is going to be for your second retract, your second gear. Because we're going to have to put the gears on two um, switches. Um, this is the that's not going to be ideal, but this is going to this is a limitation of the BEC of the um, uh, onboard B, uh, on on the on this BDB on this flight controller. Um, I was struggling with with getting this to work right. I, I didn't have to do this on on my FMS T28, but the this is a, a larger bird, and um, I had burned up a servo, uh, a smaller a smaller servo trying to get these to work right but it was just um, it was it was very challenging and this is the solution that I came up with so I'm gonna go through this quickly again because it's gonna be a big mess of wires once I show you and once this is connected so this these pins right here S bus unless you're doing S bus you're not going to connect anything to here so again these four pins right here up on top this is where you're going to be connecting your um, for, for our purposes it's going to be the spectrum SR XL2 um, or it would be for your ELRS or your crossfire. Um, so this pin right here is going to be your throttle or for your ESC. This one's going to be empty. This pin right here is going to be for your elevator. Uh, for us, you know, since we're using Spectrum, it's going to be um, aileron. This is going to be empty because we're going to be aileron is going to be in a Y connector. Um, and this one right here is going to be uh, rudder, gear, or retract, flaps, pan, tilt, second gear, retract. Um, and on that empty, on that empty pin that we're going to put on the aileron, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to put a capacitor um, on there, and I'll show you that. That's going to be, um, you know, for me, kind of a peace of mind. You know, it's kind of like. Uh, you put on there for you know to have extra power on there to help prevent brownouts. Um, you know, I don't know if that actually works. Uh, I think it does, but um, I'll show you that as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and connect these, um, connect all these up, and I'll show you how messy that is, and we'll try to get some wire management here to, as well. I do want to point out um, before you connect your throttle, you want to pull you since you. Since the since the ESC has a BEC on it, you want to pull out this um, the red power cable so that it's not competing with the BEC on the flight controller. So pull it out and you know keep it. You know I put this single Dupont on it so that it's not so it doesn't short something out. But so that way you're just getting the the signal and the and the ground on it, and then. Yeah, put it on there. Okay. Okay. Here's everything all wired up. Now, it's messy right now. You know, I just threw it in here. Um, I'll try to get better clean up. But it is, it is a lot of wiring and it is going to be messy. Um, here's the capacitor that I was talking about. Um, and um, it's a, this is... This is actually what I use. It's a Hobby Eagle. I get it from Motion RC. Um, it's a 3300 UF capacitor. Um, I, th I think they're a couple bucks, two, three dollars. I'll put I'll put a link them in the description on you know where I get it. But uh, I figure you know a little bit of protection, 
um, is helpful because you know there's a, there's a lot riding on this thing um, but this is everything is going to be filled up on on the uh, on the fly controller um, and you know we'll, we'll get to in the next video we'll get to when we, we plug in the pan and tail gimbal gimbal when we um, plug them in to these these uh, pin headers over here um, yeah all right so also we're going to get to if you notice you can see right here you have this arrow where it's pointing it's pointing towards the back of the plane so um, essentially what i've done is i have mounted it backwards um, and i had to because the the lead cables that i've um, soldered onto onto the uh, flight controller for you know to connect the esc and also to be able to plug the battery in you know i didn't i didn't want to have to you know reach them over um so what we'll do is that's actually a, a software fix where we can change the angle of the flight controller you know the flight controller doesn't have to be that way i mean we can do the software we can tell it you know which direction it could even be on its side um so we'll i'll show you how to fix that as well all right so yeah it's messy and it's going to get messier so all right so here we go We've got everything connected and so the first thing i want to do before we start or anything is let's go ahead and set the alignment of the fly controller um you know i don't have the um i don't have the camera on the on the plane but um what i'm doing is i'm going to pick the plane up from the from the uh the horizontal st stabilizer and uh so i'm picking it up in the air but as you can see on the screen is showing that um, I'm not, so that it's the opposite direction. So what we need to do is set the alignment. And this is really simple, you know. Um, we're gonna come down here into the left side of the uh, uh, INAV configurator, go to the alignment tool, and we're gonna come right here. You can also do this in the command line uh, with the CLI. But um, we have some options here. We can change the roll, the pitch, or the yaw. Well, you know, this, uh, the only thing that I did is I, um, you know, flipped it around uh, 180 degrees, uh, you know, so that way I could connect the ESC and the battery easier. So, you know, um, so all I did was I'm affecting the yaw. So all you got to do is come right here and I'm just going to type 180, hit enter, and, um, or, you know, if I can just change, you know, the slider right here, and you can see, you know, everything's moving with it. But I'm just going to come right back here, type 180, because I just did a 180 degree flip on the yaw, hit enter. And then again, I have to hit save and reboot. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that, you know, I, I said in, in the very first video that the GPS that I, um, you know, that I, that I chose for this build has a compass on board. Um, and, you know, whenever I was uh, enabling everything, um, you know, with the GPS, I didn't, you know, turn on the magnometer. Um, and it's, it's not really needed. Um, I know that in drones, uh, people turn the, I think it's needed, you know, the compass, the magnometer all is needed in, in that. And I, and I think with I know 7 or, and maybe in the newer 7.1 when it's released, and it's probably going to be released soon, um, I, I think for fixed wing, um, it's going to be usable. Um, and maybe I'll come back and revisit it, but that's why I didn't turn it on. It's, um, from what I understand, it's not really needed or usable or I don't know if I've read or heard that it maybe causes issues, but but maybe not with line F7, but, you know, I, I, I don't really need it, you know, from, from what I'm doing, so I didn't turn it on. So we're not, I'm not really messing with it or enabling it. But so anyhow, what we're doing here is we are fixing the alignment of the flight controller since I, you know, put it backwards in the plane. So I need, now I need to click Save and Reboot.
This is my transmitter fussing at me. Okay, so it's rebooted and I'm gonna come up here to set up so I can see a picture of the plane. It says it's crooked a little bit, it is. So I'm going to adjust it, yep. Yeah, look there. And now if I pick up the tail of the airplane, I'm gonna pick it up so that the nose points down. And there it is. Yes, it is correct. And if I turn the right wing like I'm going to the right, it is left. If I pick the front of the plane up, it should go up. Yep. So, yes, it is correct. So, that is how you uh, change the orientation of the flight controller. That way, um, and that is important because, you know, it has... You know, the, the gyro, you know, the accelerometer, you know, it's got stabilization, and if it's not right, you can just stick it in the old way. You know, it even shows the the picture here, um, the arrow, the orientation. Okay, so that's how you s set the alignment if you need to put the flight controller in a different orientation in your plane. Okay, let's start configuring the servos or the channels. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to the mixer. All right, by default, once we once we bound the uh, the receiver, um, and in our case we bound the uh, Spectrum forty six fifty one receiver. Um, by default, it gave us uh, four four servos. Um, one two three four. Uh, the pitch, roll, and yaw. And it set up the ailerons um, on its on each, basically on its on its own on its own channel or its own servo, and effectively we could say that it's its own channel. Um, and what we right here, what I want to show um, is right here where it says output mapping. This is equivalent to when I was showing you the you know the the, the pins. On the uh, on that on you know those on that railing um, where everything was connecting, um, you know the that first one you know that we that we skipped that would be for the S bus. Um, the S1 was for the motor uh, or the ESC. Uh, S2 was for a second ESC and we skipped it. Um, S3 right here is going to be for the server one is going to be for the elevator. Um, the next one is going to be for the aileron. The next one is going to be for another aileron. But since the uh, this this model has a, a Y connector, we're going to leave it on the Y connector so this is empty. And in its place, remember, I'm putting a um, you know that capacitor. And then right here um, for S six, we're putting the rudder. And then. S7, we're putting um, the first uh, gear or retract, and then on this one, we're putting um, the flaps, and then the pan, and then the tilt, and then the second retract. And that's that's what this output mapping is. This is going to be physically where how we've got everything connected to the to the speedy. So just when you look at this, look at this as okay. This is the actual physical mapping of where we're plugging everything in. All right, so what we need to do is we need to add, um, we need to uh, add uh, some, some new mixes into this. So this is actually very simple, it's not complicated, um, but we need to change some things here, or change something. Um, and the first thing we need to change is since we are um, keeping the ailerons on the Y connector, um, you see that says one, two, three, four, we need to tell it that they're not on separate um, on separate pins. So all we got to do is we're keeping them on pin two. So all we got to do is change this right here three to a two. So I'm going to um, put a two here, and then I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to um, well we're just going to keep moving. All right. So so now it's going to we're going to it's going to bind these two together. All right, the next thing we'll do is now, this is gonna, I'm gonna try to explain this um, 
in a way that how I understand it, so, so that maybe you can understand it the same way. Um, you you you're gonna you have your your transmitter, um, and that you have your channels that you control servos with, um, and if you you know you also have um, you know like your transmitter has channels that you know that you uh, assign to, to switches, um, but you. Um, can also you know those you know switches control servos, and so that's what these are doing. These these this right here controls servos, but um, you can also assign um, switches to do other things, that, but not to control servos. And um, that's what we can do when we are going to um, you know when we can set things up for uh, arming and. Um, you know, to, to set up, you know, the the, the loiter mode. Um, you can set up, you know, your your buzzer, return to home, your um, auto tune, you know, the trimming stuff, and that stuff's going to be set up in, in the modes tab right here. Um, and we'll we'll get to that. But so, but when if you if you're if you find yourself working in here and you're like, okay, well, I need to assign, um, you know, these these switches. You're not going to assign those switches in here, and so just kind of bear with me on this. So, but what we need to do is we need to assign um, some more channels to correspond with these output mappings right here. So, what I need to do is I need to add the um, I need to add the the rest of the mixes or the you know the the, the channels for the um, the 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 retracts the um, Flaps, the pan and tilt, and for the extra retract. So, all we got to do is real simple. Is I'm going to add a, a new mixer rule, and um, this one right here is going to be for the first retract, and we're going to leave it at five. And all we got to do is I'm going to say, click this pull down menu, and I'm going to scroll down, say RC channel five, and then I'm going to add a new mixer rule, and it's going to say six. And I'm going to click this pull down menu and I'm going to come down here and say RC channel 6. Then I'm going to say add a new mixture rule. It's going to say 7. You, know, you, you get it by now, right? And I'm going to come down here and choose RC channel 7. And then I'm going to, this is going to, so this 5 right here, this one is going to be for my retract or gear. Or gear 1, and you're going to get why I'm saying gear 1. Um, and then this one right here is going to be for my flaps. This one right here is going to be from a pan. I'm going to add a new mixer rule, eight. I'm going to scroll down here to RC channel eight. I need to add one more, and this is going to be a new mix. Wait, no. Yeah, add a new mixer rule, nine. This one I'm not going to say nine because I'm actually using nine somewhere else, or will be using nine. Will be using nine somewhere else. So I'm going to actually call this one RC channel thirteen because I may. Later on, when I come, let me come up with a better solution. Some, you know, but right now for for what I'm doing here um, to make the retracts work on this flight controller, I'm having to uh, split the retracts to two different switches. Um, it's not ideal, but this is this is how I'm getting it to work on this um, the Speedy B flight controller. All right, so here we go. Um, so now, before we can move on, we're going to do a save and reboot. Okay, now that it's rebooted, um, everything is here. All right, now we need to go to the Outputs tab. Um, so that's the next one right here to the left. So we click on that. Okay, so um, we will look at, you know, we got the different ESC protocols. I'm not real familiar with these. I know that the people of the drones um, used like the D-Shot or the Multi-Shot, and I know that there was some compatibility issues with the last iNav version um, with the SpeedyB. And I was messing with these on my last build, and it was kind of sporadic. So I just left it at standard, and standard worked fine. Um, and then the silver refresh rate, um, I've, you know, I've, I've had good luck with just going at 100 hertz, so we'll leave them at that. Um, looking at 
the only thing I want to point out here, the number of uh, motor, the number of uh, motor poles or number of magnets, the in, in the manual for the uh, on the E-Flight uh, Carbon Z T28 Trojan, it does it does specifically mention that there are uh, uh, 14 uh, number of magnets, and it says to put this in here, so it's already there by default, so we're good. Um, all right, so we will get into how to calibrate the ESC here in a little bit. So we're just going to skip past this right here. Okay, so when we added the uh, extra uh, uh, in the mixer, it, it added all of that in here. Um, all right, so with the, um, in the manual, um, it says that we have to reverse the gear. Um, and so that's going to relate to servo 5. I'm just going to tell you that from I already know this. So we need to do a reverse. So that's here. And servo 9, it's already reversed for us. So um, if it's not, if you know if you're if you're doing the same build with me, um, just know that if you're if you're having to split your retracts um, to two different switches, just know that they both need to be reversed. Um, and then we'll we'll get to that. So I'm going to do a uh, save and and then I think what we need to do now we'll go ahead and do a save and reboot and then what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and move to the transmitter and let's go ahead and get that set up um, and then we will uh, test it um, and then uh, make sure everything's working we'll come back and calibrate the ESC and then we should be Good to go you know in the last video we were just really quickly we set up the model um, and that was so that we could bond the receiver but we do need to do some more setup on the transmitter um, the the first thing that we need to do is we need to set the aircraft type up um, and we need to do that so that way we can set up the flaps so you know go to the uh, the model setup and go to the aircraft type and what, what you want to do is you want to set up the wing type. And the wing type is one, air, one aileron and one flap. Um, and that's also how the manual tells you to set it up. You know, when you, when you buy the, the plane, if you get the bind to fly version, whatever, it says set up one aileron, one flap, and a, uh, a normal tail. And that's all you have to do. Set it up that way. And that uh, setting up that way will also, um, in the menu options, will give you the the flap set up so set it up that way and you're good to go now i've also have already set it up in the transmitter so i'm just gonna you know that way i can just quickly show you how i have it set up and then uh, you can either copy my settings or you know i have my own way that i like to use my switches so um you know set yours up according to how you like it but this is just how i have mine set up okay so the um the next thing, I'll, I'll quickly show you how I have my flap set up. Because it's real simple. You don't have to set up, you know, you know, some people when they're setting up INAV, I think they do their setup or mixes or something, you know, they're, they set it up in INAV itself. You don't have to do that. You can do it through your transmitter. All you have to do through INAV is to set it up in the mixer like I had showed you. Um, you know, you set up the, the mixer, the channel. So that way you can sign it, the servo and the, um, you know, the channel, which we did. And then here we go. There's, I'm going to go to the flap system. And I sign it to the switch. For me, I like to put my, fla my flaps on switch E. And, uh, and then I adjust, I set it up according to how the, uh, the spectrum or the, you know, the E-flight for this plane uh, tells me to do it. So negative 100, elevator 0, position 0. Or position one is zero, 10 percent elevator. Position two is 100 percent, and 18 percent elevator. And speed is two seconds length. That's it. That's all you got to do. And you know, if you look here on the flap section, if I do the, and then I'll show you here in a little bit. Whenever we, you know, whenever we connect it up, you'll see. Whenever we test all the control surfaces, you'll see the, you know, you'll see the elevator working. All right. So we'll get out of here. Okay. Um, but let's come back here to the model setup and the channel assignment. Okay. 
So for the channel input, you know, obviously you, know, you can't really do anything for the, you know, throttle elevator, uh, aileron rotor. But this is how I assign my gears, or you know, for the for the sliders for uh, seven and eight. You see how I've got left slider, right slider. That's for my pan and tilt. Um, whenever it is not connected to the head tracker, um, you know, I, I like to be able to, you know, be able to use the sliders to sit there and, and move the, you know, the 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 pan and tilt gimbal. I can, you know, I can just stand there and look at the plane, and I can move the you know, make it move in the cockpit. So I'll have a sign there and then, um, you know, so I can you know, have them physically signed. But whenever you, what you do is, you know, whenever, whenever you are, um, when you have the head tracker on, you assign it to a, to the, to the trainer port. Um, and you flip a switch and then, you know, then, and then it works. But whenever it's not, you know, whenever you don't have it in the, like the student mode, um, you can control it with a, the sliders or whatever all right and then um, so then you have you see that I have um, channels 9 10 11 12 and I don't have 14 but 9 10 11 12 you see that I have them assigned to switches but you didn't see me assign those into the mixes um, and, and the reason why is because I I have them assigned to do other functions, you know, like the loiter, the return to home, the um, do the the trim functions and all. And we'll get to those. But those those get um, assigned in the modes function and or modes tab in in the INAV configurator. The and I may change the switch F because I, I I remember that I, that's actually the um, switch that I use for. Um, you know, controlling my head tracker, but right now I've got that assigned for the second gear retrack. But um, so that's that's what I have right there. Okay, so let's let's get out of that, um, and then let's come here to back to model adjust, and let's go to uh, the servo setup. Now. In the ONAV configurator, um, I had showed you to for the for the for the gears for the retrack um, under the output tab. I, I told you that you need to click that tab to do a reverse, but that is right here under aileron. You see that I have the um, section here reversed. This is the only place in the transmitter that you reverse a channel. Um, I found that, and, and um, you'll see if I scroll through here, nothing else here is reversed. Um, I, I have, whenever, I found this also in my last build, that, um, that when I had reversed it in iNav, so what happens is, is that whenever you connect everything up, your ailerons are going to be reversed. You know, left is right, and right is left. You can reverse it in iNav, and it's right. But uh, what I found is when I did my maiden on my last plane, um, when I, whenever you know, I took off, and I was in manual mode, and when I took off and I put it in, you know, try to put it in um, acro mode, um, the plane just spun like a top, and I was like, oh crap, it's gonna crash this thing. And what it was is something about that um, reversing it and you know reversing the ailerons and INAV, it was backwards, and I didn't, you know, you know, you want to pick it up and you know and, and and you know do your 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 tests you know for the stabilizer you know the or the you know the the gyro the gyro test and i obviously had it backwards in my head and uh and i figured out you know when i when i brought it home i was like what the heck's going on and i took the, res the reverse off of inav and i came and reversed it in the transmitter and it fixed it well same thing happened whenever i was testing it here um, I reversed it on, you know, I said maybe that was a one-time thing. I reversed it in iNav and didn't reverse it here. And I, I did the um, the gyro test and it was backwards again. So I turned it off iNav and I reversed it on the transmitter and it was it was it was right. So this is the only place or the only thing in the transmitter that you will reverse it. So if you if whenever you connect your um, your plane to the to you know to to the flight controller, and if your ailerons are reverse, um, 
you know, make, make certain that you, you know, do the gyro test, make certain that whenever you do it, that, that it's right. But for me, this is the only place that I do a reverse on the transmitter. Everything else you want to do on the, um, on the flight controller. Okay. Also, um, you know, when we're talking about doing the range, when you're testing, you know, um, in the last video when we were, when we were adjusting the, the, the travel and the range, you know, we, we, we did the initial setup through the CLI, but then we want to do the fine tuning in here under travel. Um, you know, we'll come in here and we'll start adjusting, you know, in here. Also, um, when you want to, you know, when you need to start, you want to do all of your physical uh, control um, control surface adjustments, you know, from the, the plane itself. Um, but then you also to do, you know, you still come in here and and do all your sub trims and everything from from the transmitter. Um, and then your rates and expo, you don't do them here. You do them from the um, from from the flight controller from my nav configurator. So don't don't bother setting them up in here. This is another one you don't do it here. You also don't um, use your trim buttons. Um, you can there is a, a that, it, that that is an advanced um, technique that you can do whenever you fly the plane, but you have to do it in manual mode. And um, but there's there's you know but it, it doesn't it doesn't take. So so you know when you're when you're using a flight controller with iNav. You don't you don't use your trim buttons. Um, all of it, there's um, there's auto trim, and there's a way to do that and to save it. But you don't do, don't do those through the transmit. Okay, so basically, you know that's it. Everything else is um, handled through through INF. Okay, I want to quickly show you how to calibrate the ESC. Now, the important thing is we need to make certain the prop is removed from the plane when we do this. And I do have the prop removed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to outputs over here on the left-hand side of the INAF configurator. And we're gonna come down here. And we don't calibrate um, from, from the transmitter like you normally do. But everything else is, is similar. But what we do is we calibrate from the INAF configurator. So what we do, make sure the propers are moved the proper is removed. We come right here and we um, click here. I understand the risk, and we click here. And we this is the master slider for the ESC. And right now I have the battery um, unplugged, so we're going to make it um, you know you know all the way 100%. And the idea is the same as you would on um, any any uh, any transmitter we, you you put your uh, your your throttle to 100% you plug the uh, the battery in you wait for the beeps and then you go all the way to zero and then it's calibrated so it's the same thing except instead of doing it from the transmitter we're going to do it from my nav so here we go so i'm going to go ahead and put it at 100% and then i'm going to go to the plane i'm going to plug the battery in so here we go. Okay. So let's see how it is. All right. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and unplug. But again, what we're going to do is we do a save and reboot and we're done. But that's it. It's that simple. So I'm going to disconnect the battery and then I'll do a save and reboot. And that's it. We calibrated the uh, the ESC. Okay, now that we have everything connected and we have the uh, transmitter configured, we have iNav configured. Everything right now is configured for line of sight. Uh, but I want to go ahead and show you what it looks like 
you know, everything is, is tested. Um, I'm by myself, so I'm not going to try to show you the gears because uh, I don't have anyone here to record me. But um, just got everything thrown in here. And just for aesthetics, I'm going to go ahead and just put the canopy on. There's no, no FPV in there yet, but let's go ahead and, and show you. Everything right now is controlled by an F. So we have up elevator, down elevator, right and left aileron. We have flaps. And also, we have GPS, and since we have GPS, we can arm it. And so we have... And I'm going to try to show you with the sun, but we have telemetry. Okay, we got and there's a look, satellites. So, so we got GPS, and and we'll see. We can see this stuff in the OST in the um, um, in the goggles whenever we whenever we're wearing them. So anyhow, just wanted to, to show you that. All right. Well, that's it. I appreciate you sticking it out with me uh, through all of this. I, I know that it's a lot and a lot to digest. Um, but, uh, you know, at the end of this, when it's all said and done, we'll have a, a, a plane that should be uh, flying. We'll be able to do FPV. It's going to be it's going to be great. Um, it, uh, hopefully I, I didn't miss anything. Uh, I want to be as thorough as I can. I don't want to go too fast where you watch this and say, oh, well, this is great, and I'm glad he's having fun doing this, but I can't ever do this, because I want I want this to be something that you can watch and follow me through, and then, you know, you do this, you know, with me, and you can just run this video and just do it, you know, and, um, you know, and, and have your own plane as well, because it's, it's, it's something that uh, I think anybody can do. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. Um, so we'll we'll see you in the next video, and uh, I appreciate you watching. And uh, you know, please uh, consider uh, liking and subscribing. Thank you.